Good afternoon. Todd Englehart, Regional Director of Investments, Cumberland Advisors, standing in for Matt McAleer. It is Friday, August 19, just before the close. We got off to a great start this week, but just didn't finish all that well. Uh, downdrafts on Wednesday and again today contributed to snapping a four-week rally in both the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. I'll get to the downdraft in a second, but for the numbers, the Dow Jones Industrial Average finished the week at roughly minus 0.2, the S&P 500 at down about 120 basis points, and the NASDAQ 100 down about 250 basis points. Why? Uh, the proverbial tug of war is a major contributor, the tug of war between uh, recession and inflation. The market is ultra sensitive to uh, headlines at this juncture. Uh, we woke up Wednesday to the UK announcing 10% year over year inflation in their economy and that reverberated through the US market. There was a, a reasonable sell off on Wednesday. The market did stabilize a good bit on Thursday, but again today, uh, the inflation pundits resumed control. Uh, a couple of the Fed governors had made statements that we need to take more uh, strict measures to uh, reduce inflation here in the states. There are some positives, however. Uh, the market is indeed finding a floor. Uh, we are, after all, up about 15 percent on the S&P 500 since the lows in June. Uh, I will tell you that this week's uh, pullback uh, was comparatively mild to that of the first part of the year. Uh, the trading dynamic, uh, two interesting uh, points here. Unlike the indiscriminate selling uh, during the first part of the year, you are finding now buyers coming into the market on these dips. And I will also say that there is less piling on, if you will, during uh, downward movements, selling movements. It seems as though the sellers are becoming a little bit more tired and there's buyer appetite out there. Uh, the trade volumes, particularly during downdrafts, have become less dramatic. In terms of sectors in the market that have performed well, as you can tell with the, the tail off on Wednesday through Friday, uh, the more conservative sectors did better this week, consumer staples, uh, energy, and utilities. Relative to the tug of war I spoke of earlier, uh, some housing start data surfaced during the week and uh, certainly caught our attention. We're seeing economic slowdown in, in several measures. Uh, keep in mind, housing, which I'm going to show you here, is between 15 and 18 percent of the United States gross domestic product. And since the early April high, as you see on the graphic, this measure is down by a, a very meaningful amount. And although this news is not great for housing, it should temper some concerns for those in the sustained inflation camp, which could be good in the long run for the stock and the bond market. Uh, with that, we're going to uh, toss it over to John Mousseau, the moose, who is taping remotely this week. Hi, it's John Mousseau. It is Friday afternoon on August 18th. I'm actually talking to you from an Amtrak train on the way to Kingston, Rhode Island, uh, from Stanford, Connecticut, where I had a meeting today. A uh, little bit of a promotion for public transportation, one of the hallmarks, as we know, of public finance in general. Um, train is crowded, uh, good sign, and I think when you look at trains in general, uh, certainly back to not what you were pre-COVID, but pretty darn close to it, call it, you know, certainly 80, 85 percent. Uh, look at things like airports, they're back to 80 percent and climbing, and we're starting to see a lot of investment in airports through the issuance of municipal bonds uh, for infrastructure needs there too. So that is going forward. Again, this is reversion to the mean, back what we were experiencing before COVID and all healthy signs for the economy down the road. A couple of charts last this week. Last call for Old Saver, Connecticut. Last call for Old Saver, Connecticut. Only three doors are going to open. And this the, is the last call for Old And Saber. the charts that we're going to see are the two-year and 10-year treasury since the beginning of the year. Uh, on those charts, you can see really since June how they have divided and the two-year has been ahead of the 10-year. We've talked about it a lot. Um, this negative yield curve, in our view, does mean a slowdown down the road. You're certainly seeing anecdotal signs of it, whether you're talking about the National Association of Home Builders, housing starts, housing prices, commodity prices, um, you know, increasing jobless claims, etc. None of them by themselves tell one story, but together they tell a story of an economy that is going back to normal from the overheating that we had. 
Um, certainly, if you look now at the second chart we're going to show, you can see the difference in yields this week, both in munis and treasuries. And the real story on this is look at the big move up in muni yields on the short end of the market, much more so than treasuries. What does that mean? It means a couple of things when we look at it. Number one, it's telling you that the muni market in the short end was way overheated with people pouring money into municipal bonds and the yield ratios uh, really down to almost uneconomic levels, like 55%. So you could buy a treasury, pay the tax, and be ahead of the game rather than owning a muni bond. Um, you can tell in the last chart how the ratios have bounced up this week in the shorter end. Um, the second thing that this tells us is that people believe that the Fed is not done yet and going to continue to raise short-term interest rates. We believe that. Uh, we believe even though there's a chance down the road that they could pivot or reassess things, for now, raising rates is on their radar screen. Thank you. And that this hiking of rates will continue. Another thing that the Muni chart will show you with yields as low as they were relative to treasuries in the short end, tells you how much money was pouring in. And in a bigger picture, we look at that and say, boy, this is money that doesn't care where the ratio is. It is going into munis come hell or high water in the short end, and that's where they're parking. And in our view, that has often meant that a lot of smart money is starting to bet on a change in Congress. Whether we see it or not, no, we're not here to argue the politics of it, but we always know that a change in Congress usually means changes in laws and changes in directions of which way the country's going. Uh, and, and, and boy, when you see money pile in like that, that tells you that as well. We've seen that in the past uh, as well. Uh, so that's it for bonds this week. Uh, we hope you have a very good week, and we'll talk to you next week. And thanks for putting up with all the noise. Thanks for your insights, John. Don't forget to like comment, and subscribe so you can follow along with our weekly videos. As I mentioned, Matt will be back next week. Have a restful weekend.